Now, you mentioned the electability concerns that struck her four years ago. And obviously, a lot has changed in four years. We have emerged from a global pandemic. She has been second in command. But I've already heard some concerns from certain corners of the Internet and of the of society saying, you know, a woman ran against Trump in 2016 and, and look at how that turned out. How are you looking at I know it's it's only been 24 hours, but how are you looking at how people are talking sure. about Vice President Harris now that she is the presumptive nominee? Yeah, I mean, inevitably, as we've already seen, questions raised immediately are, can she win? Now, we would ask that of any candidate, right? Especially in this crazy circumstance. Um, you know, can she win with just a few months? Can she win in bringing the Democratic Party together? Like, those are real legitimate questions. But I think what we have to be really cognitive about is that the idea that she can't win because she's a woman or because she's a black woman is just perpetuating this bias, right? So if you say that somebody who hasn't done it before, right, who's somebody who represents a community that hasn't yet been in the office can never win the office, right? We never make history. And so when Kamala Harris for now many years has that line in her stump speech about um, being unburdened by what has been, I always get it wrong, but you know, um, uh, to see what is possible. That is her directly trying to take on the electability biases. She you know, would say things on the campaign trail like, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. And effectively, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, she would say, you don't think I'm electable, but here's why I am. And so what I think we'll see in the coming days, and we've already seen from her surrogates and folks endorsing her, are reinforcements. She is qualified, she has the support, there is no reason that she can't win this race. And that is something that is more important, that effort and that reassurance has historically been and will be in this race more important for a woman, and in this case, a woman of color, because there are these perceptions among the electorate that, oh, I just, I'm not sure the country is ready. Mm. Um, and when people buy into that electability bias, they reinforce it through a number of ways. One, they start to say like, I guess I'll put my money behind somebody else. Or they say, you know what, she has no chance, so maybe I won't go out and knock those doors. And so really taking that head on right now and using the fundraising numbers and the mobilizing numbers and the number of endorsements that we're seeing from prominent Democrats, using that to say like, oh, she's clearly electable. Um, hopefully, I think for her campaign, they're hoping that that will push back against some of those biases early so that she doesn't have to spend so much time I mean that as her campaign, you know, fighting those biases going forward.